The rituals of psychodrama implied that the self was constructed within and through internal or psychological man in relation to his social universe, revealing a transformation in concepts of selfhood wherein the self was understood to subjectively experience the world as an orthodox psychoanalysis, and then objectively create itself in response to this object and subject field environment, as in contemporary sociology. In so doing, Moreno predated object relations theory, typically attributed to Ronald Fairbairn's work in the 1940s, as well as post-war relational psychoanalysis by Melanie Klein, Eric Erickson, and D.W. Winnicott. Taking psychodrama as a case study for contextualizing the self therefore complicates our understanding of modernity as a period characterized by the concept of a conscious and autonomous self in comparison to what has been called a generalized sense of identity in early modern Europe, where the self was construed in terms of corporate belonging. Instead, as I hope this paper will illustrate, psychodrama presents a rich example of how moderns developed new forms of secular rituals to enable self-realization and social belonging in response to the technological, institutional, and epistemological experiences of modernity, which have been said to fragment, commodify, and impersonalize human existence. You may dispute the exact date of this transformation, but it is nonetheless clear that in the period from at least 1800, the self emerged as something that was made and not an identity that was inherited or static. As Anthony Giddens writes, it became a reflexive <coughs> project. We find an early example of the modernization of the self-concept as an explicitly creative project in Moreno's theory of psychodrama. Yet what renders psychodrama different from therapy culture in general, and from psychoanalysis in particular, is his suggestion that the self was created through conscious recognition of internal emotions or states that could be represented through performance, thus constructing an individual in relation to others, as in the self amongst its social network. This premise not only challenged the two-way transference between patient and analyst in traditional psychoanalysis, it also suggested that psychopathologies were only effectively treated by contextualizing the psychology of the self within its environment, thus representing one of the earliest yet often overlooked examples of relational or systems field theory. It also predated or was concurrent to Otto Rank and Shando Ferenczi's collaboration in the early 1920s, who suggested that therapy should encompass a here and now approach, recognizing the analyst's emotional involvement in therapy and the centrality of emotions to relationships within the present. Unlike contemporaneous theories in sociology, such as George Herbert Mead's distinction between the social subjective self, I, and the subsequently objectified me, psychodrama implied that individual consciousness emerged from inner emotionality before existence in a community. Therapeutic practices therefore had to account for the constant exchange between the interiority of the psyche as well as the exterior construction of the self in relation to others. As a result, the psychodramatic stage created a liminal space between inner and outer worlds that, to borrow D.W. Winnicott's phrasing, presented an intermediate era, area of experiencing where illusion and reality coalesced in the creation of selfhood. First, a brief biography. Moreno was born in 1889 as the first child of Nisi Moreno Levy, a Jewish Romanian merchant, and his young wife, Paulina Stern. In 1895, the family moved to Bucharest, from Bucharest to Vienna, and in 1909, Moreno enrolled at the university to study philosophy before transferring to medicine. Around 1912 or 1914, he seems to have met Sigmund Freud, prompting a lifelong interest in psychoanalysis that he continued to develop as a research assistant in university site laboratories. During this period, Moreno began helping Viennese prostitutes organize to petition for human rights and later worked as a doctor at refugee settlements in Austria and Hungary during the First World War. Combined, these experiences informed his interest in group dynamics, particularly the question of how psychological tensions could be relieved or intensified through artificial social groupings. After receiving his medical degree in 1917, he turned his attention to theater, exploring the metaphor of the stage for man's experience of the world, leading him to publish an art journal with several expressionist friends. From 1921, he began to formally combine these interests in theater, psychoanalysis, and medicine, creating a genre of psychotherapy based on principles of spontaneity or improvisation 
that would culminate in his theory of psychodrama. Schickleif Theater, or theater, theater of Spontaneity, and Therapeutic Theater, later known as psychodrama, developed from Moreno's desire to return theater to its primordial form, based upon his belief that drama could catalyze individual expression and therefore release social or psychological stress through performance. The genesis of this idea lay in Moreno's conviction that modern man lacked agency, that the Viennese were creatures rather than, rather than creators of their own world. He therefore devised a theory combining recent developments on the European stage with his own peculiar fusion of metaphysics and psychoanalysis, teaching patients to perceive their inner thoughts and feelings on stage, to give external expression to these internal psychological states through spontaneous acting, verbal as well as nonverbal, and to relieve this inner stress and find agency in their own lives by working through potential resolutions with the director analyst, Moreno, and the audience, who more often than not were friends, families, and local neighbors directly involved in the issues at hand. This staging of the quotidian, whose plots included marital disputes, job stress, child rearing pressures, or conflicts between friends and neighbors, provided an outlet for locating tension within the psyche and outwardly communicating this stress, whether conscious or unconscious, to the therapist you know, and the audience or social community for analysis. Psychodrama was therefore one of the earliest examples of group therapy that situated the individual self within a wider social whole, <coughs> reflecting Moreno's belief that inner psychological states related to states of being, i.e. emotions, that could only be treated by a three-step process of self-reflection, self-expression or projection in social interaction. Moreno's interest in spontaneity as a means of creatively developing consciousness dated back to his years as a graduate student around 1911, when he improvised fairy, fairy tales for children in the public gardens along Kaiser Josefstrasse. After running into conflict with local authorities for all the time he spent with children in these public spaces, he shifted his focus indoors, developing a systematic approach to spontaneity research that purported to quantitatively test adult capacity for improvisation at a spontaneity theater he opened near the Viennese Opera in 1922. To remedy the creative deficit that he claimed to find in Viennese adults, Moreno developed a series of improvisation techniques and an early form of spontaneity theater called The Living Newspaper, wherein both audience and actors did not know until the day of the performance the drama's plot, which was derived from the latest headlines. One show, for example, depicted a policeman searching for a missing woman whose husband had just murdered her in their working class home. Moreno also urged producers to change performances on an hourly basis using the latest press reports in real time. Conveniently, the living newspaper allowed him to prove the validity of his methods in response to criticism from audience members who remained unconvinced that his productions were absolutely spontaneous. It was here that Moreno diverged from his avant-garde brethren, who maintained a distinction between the aesthetic and the therapeutic. For Moreno, however, the aesthetic was therapeutic. It was in drama that the individual and the universal could seamlessly shift back and forth, with catharsis moving from the spectator to the actor and from the actor back to the spectator, as the self was constantly and reflexively created on the stage. The murky borderline between illusion and reality enabled on stage allowed patients to play out and with their inner reality, anticipating Winnicott's later observation that the place of illusion in the end interaction between the inner and outer worlds, between subjectivity and objectivity, was necessary to psychic health. The borderline of the psychodramatic stage likewise paralleled Otto Grant's <coughs> assertion that human development was a lifelong negotiation between the two poles of individuation, the will to separate, and connection, the will to unite, which was actualized in therapy, where personality was manifested through creativity. Unlike other forms of art, such as sculpture, literature, or music, where beautiful objects emerged through a process of conscious delivery and separation, for example, a musician has to consciously think in order to play an instrument for music to emerge, theater catalyzed a process of spontaneous creativity that united the internal mind with the physical manifestation of the self on stage. The aesthetics of theater therefore stimulated what Moreno called a logical, ethical, physical, psychological, and social enfoldment 
producing a metaphysics of present time and a form of psychocatharsis. The material selected for psychodramatic performance was based on an interview between the director analyst and the actor patient, giving the former insights into the latter's primary symptom so that the theater would present real dramas of everyday life taking place in the minds of ordinary people. For this reason, Moreno went so far as to claim that the historian of psychology of the future may well consider the Stegreif Laboratory of 1921 <coughs> to 1924 the most important development in behavior testing since Fechner and Wundt. I make no claims about Moreno vis-a-vis Wundt, but it is no exaggeration to say that psychodrama established basic principles of group therapy and social network theory by proposing that the self was a product of internal subjectivity and objective social relationships, constantly in a d dynamic process of forming and reforming. Moreno achieved the dramatization of this dynamic through the three dimensions of therapeutic theater. First, the physical theater was intended to be a room or circular stage with no divisions between audience and actor, so that both became a singular whole, paralleling the reciprocal dynamic between self and society. Similarly, the audience was not a heterogeneous assemblage of spectators, but the authentic community of an individual's real life, reflecting Moreno's belief that daily dramas were the public not just of any community, a community in the abstract, but our village and neighborhood, the house in which we live. Second, the drama performed was the internal drama of an individual's emotional state, enabling patients to achieve a clarity of vision that elicited non-discursive self-representations, encouraging sound, breaths, and bodily movements, based on a deeply internal reality without regard to necessarily external expectations or social strictures. The short form structure of improvisation moreover emphasized how the authentic self existed only in the current moment. A philosophical presentism that continues to inform ideologies of mindfulness and grounding today, as in the notion that real life happens when we live in the moment, or that who we are today is different from who we were five years ago and will be a decade hence. Third, the external enactment or projection of this existential presentism was intended to locate future methods for internal catharsis as well as social resolution. The director therapist stationed at the boundary of stage and audience helps mediate between these two realms, conferring about possible solutions with the spectators and the actor patient during the performance's climax. Psychodrama therefore sought to produce a more authentic <coughs> theatrical experience by mapping actualization onto appearance, using the metaphor of the stage to encourage conscious and unconscious expression of the psyche. In this way, Moreno and his followers believed that theater could achieve its highest form, the thing in itself, never divorced from original acts of creation. Instead of underlying the world of phenomena or illusions, in psychodrama, the typical Kantian paradigm was reversed. The theater itself was manifesting or creating existence. Alongside these aesthetic and metaphysical claims, Moreno maintained that his program was a science exploring the truth by dramatic methods placing it firmly within the new fields of psychological and sociological science. Ironically, by presenting reality through illusion, through improvisation, the therapeutic theater sought to restore the unity between illusion and reality, or between self and society, through a process of self-reflection that cut the patient free from social strictures. Much as a small injection of smallpox prevented total infection, Moreno claimed that psychodrama enabled the routinized expression of individual stress in order to prevent the development of total psychoses by firmly returning the creative self to his social matrix. Spontaneity was central to Moreno's psychosocial construction of the self because he argued that it was the original impulse of pre primitive man, predating even memory, intelligence, and sexuality, a primary aspect of human nature that had been lost in later stages of civilization. Sure. Did everyone at the back hear me so far? I'm sorry. Because all these radio, they speak very loudly. You didn't take into account that they I'm a comedian and I have a speaker. very hard voice. <laughs> Okay? 
Moreno was united with Otto Rank in disputing Freud's emphasis on the Oedipal complex as the source of all human culture. While Orthodox Freudians continued to search for oral, pregenital, and genital causes of behavior, Moreno and Rank presented a relational model of psychotherapy that privileged emotional expression, defining neuroses as failures in creativity rather than repressed derivatives of libido. In psychodrama, the spontaneous expansion of the self occurred via two recurring phases. First, centripetal retroaction, and second, centrifugal extrajection. These are his words, not mine. Although we might read this as quantitative frippery, the equation nonetheless reveals several key insights about the creation of the modern self. First, as I mentioned earlier, the self is no longer grounded in corporate identity. Rather, it is derived from a scientific understanding of the autonomy of the individual mind and body, the unity of a player, E, related to the rise of the psychological sciences, where causal factors for current behaviors were located in <coughs> mental processes, as in dynamic psychiatry, or areas of the brain, as in experimental or physiological psychology. Second, the self was no longer conceived in relation to past experiences or communal history, but grounded in present feeling, time t. Here the moment emerges as the temporal order of self-consciousness, and present feeling, not past or future-oriented thinking, the emotional state, I, emerges as the primary constituent of selfhood. These aspects of individualism, presentism, and emotionality resonate with contemporary notions of being true to oneself or living in the moment, but they also reflect the philosophical preoccupations of Moreno's time. Presentism was a popular concept in Fantasiaca philosophy and psychology, such as William James's philosophy of the species present, defined as a knife edge or saddle back in time, stretching from the immediate past toward future horizons of expectation, or Edmund Husserl's phenomenology of retention, presence, and protension, where presence is created through an intuitive awareness combined with representation, <coughs> not to mention Alphie Bergson's concepts of élan vital and durée, which Moreno acknowledged had a significant influence on his own thinking. Finally, motion variable B foreshadowed later sociological definitions of selfhood, which suggested that an identity is shaped by social structures, processes, and concerns. This variable also reveals the dynamic aspect of psychodrama, where performance or actualization moves back and forth between the internal and the external, the psychological and the social, implying that subjectivity is always in part created through the self's orientation within an interpersonal matrix. Why was this construction or preservation of self so important to Moreno? The answer lies in his experience of modernity. Like Carl Jung, who argued in The Undiscovered Self that man was increasingly alienated from daily Moreno was convinced that the spontaneously creative self had been lost or repudiated in the rise of three forms of materialism around 1910. First, the economic materialism of Marxism. Second, the psychological determinism of Freudian psychoanalysis. And finally, the technological materialism of recent advancements in transportation and warfare. As a medical doctor trained in psychoanalysis with a penchant for philosophy, this absence of the self and of individual potential was profoundly problematic. If the self was the locus of repressed experiences traumatically determined in childhood, as asserted in psychoanalysis, as well as the vessel for illness, as in medicine, then it was only within and through that same self, Moreno argued, that redemption, <coughs> renewal, and future improvement was possible in a social context. Like a range of other metaphysical thinkers of his time, including Georges Gurdjieff, P.D. Uspensky, and Maurice Nichol, Moreno, alongside Otto Rank, posited that the construction and expansion of the self through creative acts, particularly spontaneous creative acts, was the ultimate form of self-actualization. Yet in Moreno's mind, to achieve self-actualization, creative acts had to integrate the psychodynamics of the individual mind with the socio-dynamics of human society, thus fusing the individualism of Freud with the socio-economic corporatism of Marx. To return to our earlier historiographical observations, we might also read this as Moreno's way of relocating the corporate aspect of early modern identity that appeared to have been lost in European modernity, much as Jung added an ancestral unconscious to Freud's original individual unconscious. 
Moreno initially suggested an agnostic form of self-development in his first book, Das Testament des Vaters, published in 1920. Reflecting the disintegration of the Habsburg Empire after World War I, as well as his childhood encounters with Judaism <coughs> and Christianity, his mother, though Jewish, had been educated in a Romanian convent, as well as his readings of Nietzsche, Kierkegaard, and Whitman, Das Testament proposed a universal religion based on this creative force that would unite all peoples into a single commonwealth. Instead of making the id, ego, and superego a bastion of human weakness and neurological anxiety, in Moreno's world, the self was the supreme creator, a positive as well as negative force. Whether or not God existent was irrelevant, he argued, as man himself created the world in his mind, as well in the form of other humans and materials. If we return to the embodiment of the self's dimensions in time as centripetal retroaction and centrifugal extrajection, we begin to see the twin application of psychoanalysis and modern philosophies of time in Moreno's dramatic theory. In his philosophy of pure creation, the distance between reality and illusion had to be temporally compressed. Pure creation could only be achieved by removing all phenomenology, things, beings, objects, illusions, dreams, visions, and arts, as these were tainted with experience. Pure creation could only be actualized in a spontaneous moment when the actor creator gave verbal or non-discursive expression to his conscious and unconscious mind. Unlike the broad category of the present, Moreno defined this spontaneous moment as subjective awareness of the fleeting present, an infinitesimal unit of time that was constantly being created and dissolving. Moreno's theory of psychodrama therefore derived from his general conviction that the self was constituted in the moment, a temporal orientation he found sorely lacking in both psychoanalysis, which attempted to relate all present psychoses to childhood experiences or repressions from the unconscious libidinal past, and conventional drama, which was firmly grounded in realism, staging plays that attempted to reproduce, down to the tiniest detail of space and time, external reality on the internal stage. For Moreno and his expressionist playwright friends, tripartite dramas performed on a stage by professional artists before a complacent, inactive, and bourgeois public revealed a temporal pathology where the moment of creation failed to equate with the moment of performance. Actors were merely receptacles of a past creation rather than living conduits of a creative present. Even worse, the dramatic past enacted on the conventional stage also failed to match the time of daily life. The lifespan of a real man, for example, was too long for legitimate drama, despite the fact that dozens of plays purported to present life histories. Unlike similar experiments by avant-garde dramatists in Germany, Russia, France, and England, Moreno insisted that his stage, revolutionary in form, be matched by a production equally revolutionary in temporal content, that is, by enacting the ongoing present dramas of daily life. Uniquely in psychodrama, moment form was therefore founded upon the principles of psychotherapy. Spontaneity was in fact easier to achieve in psychodrama than conventional theater, because the aesthetic imperfections of a mental patient or neighbor could be accepted, even warmly welcomed, in a way that a professional actor's ostensible flaws would be deemed intolerable. The duration of spontaneity theater was thus intended to be the time it took a patient actor to externally manifest his internal psychological state. Its time was the present moment, and its tempo was the rhythm of inner mental life. For each creative unit, Moreno argued, there is a moment of actualization. He therefore cautioned a married couple seeking help in the 1950s not to report what happened or tell a story of what they had said to each other, but to relive the situation as it actually occurred. Each psychodramatic moment was followed by a rhythmic pause produced by lighting effects, time signals, or curtains reflecting an internal psychological process of tension and release. By this iterative process, and here we might return to Professor Seligman's discussion of iterative rituals separated by gaps, just as gaps create or protect the repetitive and shared nature of ritual performances, 
So too did pauses in psychodrama create and define moments of spontaneous action or a return to the stage over many days or years. Thus, the patient actor went through a cathartic series of inner tension and outer release. Much of inhalation and exhalation of the lungs manifested a physiological process of disinfection. Spontaneous creation, the essence of life, allowed the actor creator to inhale and exhale his psyche, thereby locating himself in present time. Spontaneity treatment enabled the patient to project his inner reality outward in the in intermediate space of the stage, presenting an alternative form of transference that transcended the isolated analyst-patient encounter of psychoanalysis. By incorporating the social matrix, psychodrama also purported to produce an alternate space-time that allowed individuals to communicate and resolve shared concerns together. Two later practitioners of group therapy, Elaine Goldman and Delson Morrison, have accordingly described the psychodramatic process as a spiral moving from the periphery to the core. By suggesting routinized enactment of inner dramas on stage, Moreno and his followers believed that they could prevent the same problems within and between individuals from recurring, as well as find solutions to problems using the creativity and spontaneity of the group. To conclude, I want to briefly touch upon four areas of significance related to psychodrama and the creation of the self in modernity. First, although I did not have time to detail this in my paper, psychodrama can be interpreted as a new kind of secular religion. Alongside the broader parallels between religion and psychoanalysis drawn by many scholars, Marino explicitly likened his new theater to a sort of dramatic religion. The processes of self-realization and self-expression implicit in psychodrama, which you might call rituals, again with Professor Seligman's definition in mind, parallel the processes of inner consciousness and outer communication in ritual performances like Catholic confession. And like confession, the architecture of transference was key to the expression and creation of the self. As Derka Moreno, the psychiatrist's wife, noted, when people entered the theater or went on stage, they knew that the, the rules of reality were changed. They were in the world of as if, and could allow themselves to explore their life from different and new perspectives. Second, Moreno's theory of improvisation led to the application of original theatrical techniques that we often believe only emerged within the avant-garde theater, not psychotherapy. Acting aficionados among you may wonder how Chagreif Theater differed from the now popular Stanislavski method of improvisation developed in Russia during the same period by Konstantin Stanislavski. There are, I think, two critical points of departure. First, Stanislavski often employed a full cast and used typical stage roles in his improvisation exercises. Second, his use of spontaneity was limited to a play being improvised as it proceeded, <coughs> based on a performer entering a scene with conscious awareness of the previous experiences or emotional memories of his character in mind, rather than the expression of current and deeply personal psychological states as Moreno encouraged. In fact, one can perhaps draw greater parallels between Stanislavski and Freud, who likewise returned, preferred returning to and analyzing past moments rather than the immediate present of the psychoanalytic encounter. Third, Moreno's publications and clinical work were some of the earliest sociological approaches to self and identity, proposing the now widely <coughs> accepted notion that there is a reciprocal relationship between psychological self and society, and that the self is a processual entity constituted through an iterative process of internal reflexivity in response to external experience. The psychodramatic method was grounded in his belief that greater self-knowledge emerged from present moments of creativity, and that this self-consciousness enabled the patient to work through the problems internally as well as socially, recognizing that an absence of self-consciousness hindered an individual's ability to act upon instead of react to his environment. Moreno's techniques diverged from contemporary sociologists, however, because of his clinical focus. He distinctively settled upon the theater as the best catalyst for conscious practice, i.e. performance, of reflexive selfhood. His methods also attracted actors, such as Peter Lohr, and Hollering, Robert Grumel, Georg Kaiser, and Franz Werfel, as well as the attention of psychologists, including Alfred Adler, with whom he had a lifelong friendship, Theodor Reich, another close friend, Siegfried Bernfeld, 
August Eichhorn, and Arthur Schnitzler. Newspaper reviews from Austria, Germany, and Anglo-America revealed that a diverse public engaged with Moreno's ideas. While some denigrated the movement as a cult based on drama and music, others noted its influence had quickly spread beyond Austrian theater circles to Germany, Eastern Europe, and America, overshadowing even the contributions of theater impresarios like Strindberg. Indeed, writing in the Neues Wiener Journal of June 1924, one journalist observed that it was wrong to regard impromptu merely as a substitute for the legitimate theater. Viewed in the proper light, it is the most interesting and stimulating experiment of the day. When Moreno moved to New York in 1925, he quickly established a sanatorium called Beacon Hill in upstate New York in 1936, opened a psychodramatic theater, and founded a journal for social research called Sociometry in 1937. His contributors included Helen Jennings, Margaret Mead, Gordon Alford, and Kurt Lewin. During the Great Depression, the Church and Drama League of Nassau and Suffolk counties in New York adopted Marina's principles to provide children with an outlet for their emotions and imagination by guidance, rather than repression. And schools in Brooklyn began to apply impromptu techniques to early education from 1929 in order to encourage creative responses to unknown problems methods that continued to be experimentally applied in Canada and the United States through the 1980s. By 1942, Moreno had opened a theater of so psychodrama in New York City and established the American Society of Group Psychotherapy and Psychodrama. Barely 10 years later, the first International Congress of Group Psychotherapy was held in Toronto in 1954. Finally, though now largely forgotten, psychodrama was an important intervention in orthodox psychoanalysis. Moreno essentially pioneered an existential school of psychotherapy influenced by Freud, tied to his belief that the self was a cluster of private plus collective roles, reaching out beyond the skin of the individual organism into the interpersonal realm. Therapeutic success or failure therefore depended on an individual's ability to function within occupational, family, and community roles, not simply his own mental world, presaging what came to be known as social network theory. Moreno's revision of the psychoanalytic canon was threefold. First, he was simply more interested in encounters between people than between an individual and an object, hence his interest in methods of group rather than individual psychotherapy. He also seems to have thought in terms of the totality of a whole person, grounded in an intersubjective matrix that is necessary to produce a sense of subjectivity, an idea that we also find in the better known, better known theories of Sartre and Lacan. Whereas Freud presented an atomistic theory of individualism, suggesting that behavior was the sum of unconscious, pre-conscious, and conscious drives. Second, the processes of psychodrama took place in a physical space intended for psychological excavation, as well as public performance and <coughs> collaboration. Again, reflecting Moreno's belief that identity was a reciprocal interplay between psychological and social experience. Significantly, this also implied that states of being could be non-discursively conveyed in the patient, analyst, or audience transfer, something that was impossible in the traditional psychoanalysis where the speaking subject is so essential, as Lacan never fails to remind us. Third, Moreno maintained that spontaneity was more intrinsic to libido than anxiety, negativity, frustration, or even sex, which he argued was itself spontaneous. He thus criticized Freud for having placed too great an emphasis on the unconscious deterministic motives for conscious action, claiming that a desire to locate determinants for every experience carried the analyst further back into the past in an endless pursuit after causes that deprived the present moment of reality. Psychodrama was therefore grounded within the present moment, while psychoanalysis was predicated on the excavation of past traumas and the historical development of the Oedipal complex. In Moreno's view, however, life was a process of continuous development. Man was constantly creating himself, as well as his understanding of the world, through his interactions with other men within the present. Psychodrama transcended Freudian theory, which Joyce McDougallis calls a theater of the mind by locating, communicating, and constructing individual psychoses on a literal stage, in addition to treating and resolving the tensions between an individual and his community, reconstructing the self's relationships to his social network. It therefore reflected the modern notion that anxiety is of the internal self, 
were always related to the self's relationship with objects in the external world, as well as the now widely accepted theory that the self is only made consciously visible in relation to external objects. The unique fusion of drama, psychoanalysis, and sociology that Moreno pioneered continued to thrive after his death in 1974 in the United States, in France, Brazil, Argentina, and Mexico, where post-war psychiatrists integrated Moranian psychodrama into Freudian psychoanalysis. Indeed, psychotherapy centers in London or New York today apply a version of Moreno's systems theory to understand how social entities are connected by networks to communities as well as techniques like role reversal to understand contexts and people, revealing Moreno's contributions to social network theory in post-war psychology, sociology, and social anthropology. Through his various works, Moreno therefore created a holistic th theory of psychotherapy, recognizing that the self is perpetually created and reconstructed through a dynamic process of psychological imagination and sociological performance. Thank you.